back again for another Designing 101. Today we are going to be talking about bookcases. If you saw my last haul video, you saw that I got a new bookcase. And I actually filmed a whole video about me building it and talking about all the terrible things that happened to it. Like the board splitting and nails not going in correctly and even having to pull out my air compressor and nail gun and nailing it together that way. That was fun. So we got an area I wanted cleaned out in my office and we had the bookshelf in and we're going to be talking about how to decorate a bookshelf. I found a pin on Pinterest that got me thinking and we're going to base it off of that. The pin I found is based off more of like living room decoration type. Mine's going to be a little more functional because I do actually need it for storage instead of just being there holding things so uh let's let's get to that okay guys here is my almost empty bookshelf i forgot to take that container off so the pen i use actually talked about an order about how to style your bookshelves so we are going to do it the way the website talks about it that way you can get an idea about it so the first step is placing your books my mother is an avid Goodwill shopper, and she knows I have this business. So every time she goes to Goodwill, she buys everything. She buys me a lot of stuff, but including books. So this is just a small percentage of the books she has bought me that I have no room for because this is my office, and I don't have any shelving. So mix the books, book placement from shelf to shelf and use a mix of vertical and horizontal arrangements. So... I'm going to get going on that, and I will see you guys in a minute. Okay, guys. I have my books in my bookshelf. I have a mixture of large books down here, and some small books, and some taller books. This is what it looks like so far. Okay, next up is large accessories. So, like, your vases, your bowls, um, baskets. I already have a basket down here. Totally forgot about that earlier. So... I have some vases that I need to put in here and a couple other things. So I added some of the bigger pieces, like more storage, some of the vases, more storage baskets. This makes it a little functional. The website showed a lot of vases and a couple baskets, like one basket. It wants you to have some more space in between for little things. So the next step is adding frames. This is a layering skill. So we are going to add some frames now. I didn't have a lot of room for frames. I added my one frame over here, which I actually think might stay. Coordinates with my gallery wall. I have another piece of it over here. So this is what it looks like right now. Very colorful. Next, you add the small accessories. So like small bottles, candles, just little odds and ends. So let's get to that. I added my small things. I added a couple essential oil products up here. I added a gold cinch I made at the Harry Potter launch party. A tiny little cup that I bought at a store a long time ago. I can't remember where. It holds some thumbtacks. A candle. And some little ballerina bears. So let me take a step back. Show you the whole thing. Very functional, for me at least. Okay guys, a few tips with the bookshelves is with step one. When you add your books, try to keep the colors together. So if you have a bunch of green books, a bunch of yellow books, or a bunch of white books, try to keep them together. Or if you have a plain natural color, neutral room, and you're trying to add some color, a good way to do it is with the books or any of the other accessories in there. But if you're if you have a cream or a brown room and you have other colors in your room, like in your pillows, your accent pillows, or blankets, or any other small details, add that in your on your bookshelf. So if you have books that match that color, add them with that. If your bookshelf's white, I don't want it. Of course, you can do all white, monochromatic, or just single tone. But if you want to add the color, that's another great way to do it. So, just like, 
in a stack of five books, one that's the color that you want. That's an eye that draws the eye, and it helps balance the room a little more. Also, try with your books doing horizontal or vertical. That helps with the flow as well. And also with the sizes, if you got some thick books, some thin books, stack biggest to smallest. That way it gives some variation. With the large accessories, which was step two, keep the heavier objects lower. So if you have like a trio of vases, put that lower. But if you have just one vase, even if it is kind of large, maybe do that medium. And if you have smaller vases, go up higher. That, that also helps with the weight of the bookshelf. You don't want your bookshelf falling over. And if you put heavy objects high, cause it to tip over. And we don't want that. Also, crates, like you saw in mine, the containers, it hides the clutter. That way you can put, like, blankets. And I'll post a link to the this website on here. In the picture she has, um, she has a woven basket which would be perfect for hiding like small blankets in. So that's a good option or video games or your consoles that you aren't using or just other things that aren't in, that you don't need out in the open. Step three was framing, adding frames. Adds a little bit of artwork to your shelving. Um, if it's just plain, then it gives a little something to, for your guests to look at, instead of just looking, oh, there's some books, oh, there's some bases, those are nice, those are, these are some great titles, you have pictures, and it makes it relatable, you can do graphic, like graphics, like graphic design, pictures of your family, it makes it a little more relatable, and it gives people something to look at other than just boring books, um, so photographs, artwork, maps, just whatever you're into, if it's a man cave, like video art, or if it's like an office, like delicate little artworks. It's okay, you don't have to have all of just one thing, a mixture of both. I just have one picture in my bookcase because that's just all I really could fit and what I liked the best. And it goes with my gallery wall as well, so it ties the room together a little more. Um, so step four was small accessories. It's expressing your personality. This gives you another way of showing color. So you have your books and you have your artwork. Um, so if you have like little bright colored bottles or vases, um, those add more color. Um, you don't have to fill up every shelf. Having some space between things allows for more open. If you put, if you fill the shelf up on every shelf, it feels cluttered and that's, you don't want it to be cluttered. Um, if you want it to be a bookshelf, make it a bookshelf, all books. That's good. That's a great, I mean, that's a great decorative piece as well. But if you're wanting to showcase who you are, a bookshelf, every shelf can be something different. And so if you clump everything, it's just going to look like you ran out of space and are just setting things on there. So if you add some space, it gives it breathing room. Um, small accessories, like small statues like you get when you're on vacation like the little pencil pencil sharpeners or a little crystal or a little vase of flowers or anything um those classify as small accessories and those help tie it together i have a little um thin little dish that i forgot to put on there earlier that i hauled a couple videos ago um and that's gonna go right on there to hold like little trinkets and stuff and they also can be used as artwork the artwork on itself it's not 2D, they're three. It's 3D art. So another thing that is just an eye, it draws the eye and it personalizes it more to be for you. Whatever you want. If it's if it says you, then put it on there. Um, you want to keep it relatable, like I'm saying. If it's if it says you, it's relating relating to you. So show it off. Make sure they mean something. Just don't don't just throw things up there, or it's not gonna make sense, and it's gonna start getting clustered. Um, and something that you're not going to get bored of looking at or stuff that you're not always you and you can also make it to where you can put things on them that you're not going to use often so that's art or put things that you are going to use often so it's functional it's multi-dimensional object um it doesn't have to match 
It doesn't have to be monochromatic. It doesn't have to have a color scheme. But make sure it, it makes sense to you, at least. And it visually makes sense to you. It doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense to anybody else because it's not their house and they're not looking at everything all the time. But if it makes sense to you, it works. Um, add something like flowers, if you're into flowers. Um, that way it gives the top a collar, but it draws it from all of these hard objects. Um, and it makes it natural, makes it more lively instead of just magazine. Um, or if you're not into flowers, like not like if you're a man and you're not into the flowers, do something like the sand gardens, the zen gardens. Um, make a cool pattern and leave it. Add a succulent on there. Succulents are unisex. So it gives you something natural and something that draws it away from being plastic office magazine. I put, I didn't have a picture of it, but I, with the blue vase that was towards the middle, I hold a purple vase that had a swirl around it, and I added it next to it with that little jar that had thumbtacks in it. It adds dimension, so it's a taller, the medium, and the real short one. Add, mix up the tall and short. It says thinking in layers using different heights and different textures. So you have the smooth vase, and you have the textured vase, and you have the dotted vase. It adds visual appeal and it makes it interesting. Something again, you're gonna have it in a room. You're gonna you want you want it to look nice, so it's not cluttered. And if it's cluttered, it makes the room feel smaller. So if you're mixing it up, it makes it more interesting as well. And another tip that this website says is to think oddly. Objects look, be look better when gathered in odd numbers. But then it, it, that will work more with smaller objects, like candles or. What comes to mind are essential oil bottles, marbles, I don't, whatever that makes sense to you, work with it. With bookshelves, you can paint the back of the shelving or add paper or washi tape or just paint it in general. Um, if you're going to do that, make it to where that it matches what you're doing. You don't want everything to be like greens, blues, and yellows and then have a bright pink background because that's not going to make a lot of sense. Unless it makes sense to you, it's your house. I can't tell you what to do with that. As a design standpoint and reading what this other designer has put, add a pattern. Like if you're if you have a natural color room, like if your room if your walls are white, I would I personally would make it still the background white, but make it maybe a white and black or a white and gray pattern. That way it still blends in with the wall, but if somebody and it doesn't stick out. But if somebody's looking at it, it adds a different layer or a different texture to the wall. So it's not just all white. They can be like, oh, this is different. Or if it makes sense of what you're doing. Like if you have other accents in the room that you didn't add in the bookshelf, that just adds more pop. If you want it to stand out, then make a brightly color or an off color to it. And if it doesn't work the first time you, you do it, keep rearranging. It only works if you like it. So if you don't like your first five tries, Keep trying. You'll like it eventually. Just move things around. And it may be that you just don't have the right thing. So shop around and try to find things that you like. It's totally something that you can personalize. Because it is your house. Mine is more functional for my office. So I have a few decorative pieces in there. But I also have those functional crates. To where I don't have a lot of storage in my room. And those functional crates or boxes hide my clutter but also allows me to organize it. I didn't show what was in some of those crates but one of those um, containers has candle making supplies in it. Another one has my hardware like my safety goggles, my dust masks, um, some screwdrivers and another one has odds and ends kind of. I picked up some diffuser bottles that need like diffuser reeds in them and I have those in there. Just some quick projects grabbing things. Another one is probably going to have stencils, another one, it's just whatever you need it to be, and I need it to be functional, and if you don't need it to be functional, then that's a good opportunity for you to make it decorative, and adding the vases, and the flowers, and the multicolored whatever, and it's up to you, dependent on the room, if it's a living room, make it more formal, if it's a game room, bring out the gaming, if it's a child's room, then, let, then show the child's artwork, or pictures of the family, or their favorite books, a toy, an old stuffed animal. Just make it what you want it to be. I hope this video was very inform informative. I will post a link to this blog down below. Um, I agree a ton with what this 
lady is talking about. I'm glad I found it because it helped me doing mine. Um, and when I upgrade to the, the things that I want, the swords that I want, this is going to help a ton. So I hope this helps you a lot. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye.